Welcome to Wings of Arrow Advanced Education and Research Organization. To know more, visit our official web page www.wingsofarrow.in. Find your dream aviation and aerospace jobs at www.wingsofarrow.in. Now we are going to learn how to find the principal strains, maximum shear stress and the maximum shear strain of rectangular element. Consider a rectangular element in a linearly elastic isotropic material is subjected to tensile stresses of 83 and 65 Newton per millimeter square on mutually perpendicular planes. Determine the strain in the direction of each stress and in the direction perpendicular to both stresses. Find also the principal strains, the maximum shear stress, the maximum shear strain and their directions at the point. Take E is equal to 200,000 Newton per millimeter square and nu is equal to 0.3. Here we consider the rectangular element. Let me write the given data. Tensile stress in x direction sigma suffix x is equal to 83 Newton per millimeter square. And tensile stress in y direction sigma y is equal to 65 Newton per millimeter square. Modulus of elasticity or Young's modulus E is equal to 200,000 Newton per millimeter square and Poisson's ratio nu is equal to 0.3. Now we have to find out the strain, principal strain, maximum shear stress and maximum shear strain. First find strain in the direction of each stress. The fact that strain means relative change in shape or size implies that it is dimensionless and has no units. Strain is directly proportional to the Poisson's ratio. So for x direction, epsilon x is equal to 1 divided by e into sigma x minus nu into sigma y. And for y direction, epsilon suffix y is equal to 1 divided by e into sigma suffix y minus nu into sigma suffix x and for z direction epsilon suffix z is equal to minus nu divided by e into sigma suffix x minus sigma suffix y here all values are given substitute those values and simplify we get strain for x direction epsilon x is equal to 3.175 into 10 to the power minus 4 and epsilon y is equal to 2.005 into 10 to the power minus 4 and epsilon z is equal to minus 2.220 into 10 to the power minus 4. In this case, since there are no shear stresses on the given planes, sigma x and sigma y are principal stresses so that epsilon x and epsilon y are the principal strains and are in the directions of sigma x and sigma y. Like the normal stress, the shear stress will also have a maximum at a given angle. The maximum shear stress is given by tau suffix max is equal to sigma x minus sigma suffix y divided by 2. Solve this equation with known values. Then maximum shear stress tau max is equal to 9 Newton per millimeter square, which is acting on planes at 45 degree to the principal planes. Next find the maximum shear strain. For a three-dimensional body supporting a two-dimensional stress system, this is not necessarily the maximum shear stress at the point. So maximum shear strain depends on the maximum shear stress. Then write maximum shear strain gamma suffix max is equal to 2 into 1 plus nu divided by e into tau suffix max. 
substitute values and simplify we get the required maximum shear strain is equal to 1.17 into 10 to the power minus 4 which is on the planes of maximum shear stress did you know a violent collision created the moon the leading theory for how the moon was created is this an object about the size of Mars smashed into Earth early in our planet's history, creating a bunch of debris that circled our planet. The debris came from both the Earth and the object, and over time the smaller bits stuck together and formed the moon that we see today. This story was arrived at once the Apollo astronauts brought back a few hundred pounds of rock from their missions by the way. And in a few million years, solar eclipses will become more difficult to achieve. The moon is very slowly drifting away from the earth, which we found out after the Apollo astronauts left a laser reflector on the surface on which scientists could bounce beams. The drift is slow and gradual, at only about 4 cm a year. If this went on for long enough, the moon and the earth would become tightly locked to each other, in the sense that both the earth and the moon would keep the same faces towards each other, but the sun will expand into a red giant and likely engulf our planet in 5 billion years, long before the tidal locking happens. The moon has dancing dust especially around sunrise and sunset on the moon dust tends to hover above the surface it might have something to do with the particles being electrically charged or it might be some other phenomenon at work the effect was noticed by some of the apollo astronauts and also studied in detail during the LADY mission if you have further inquiry or requested video Drop down to our mail wings of arrow at the rate gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates. For the time being, take care, stay blessed, inspired, and fly high.